Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing good. So in today's video, we will be discussing mostly about a detailed roadmap as to how you can finish anatomy and physiology. Post that I will be posting a lot of lectures so that we can study together. And it's been quite a long that I have uploaded videos. I really apologize for that. And the main reason was because I was out of station and I had few marriages to attend. My friends got married. So a lot of things going on because of which I wasn't able to upload any videos regularly so coming back this video we will be seeing a detailed roadmap with a proper schedule as to how to study anatomy and physiology what topics to study what subtopics to study and how you can learn these things with practical hands-on implementation right so we will be seeing all these things in detail in today's video so let's get into the video Okay, so I hope you all can see the screen right now. So here I have made a detailed structured and a, you know, a schedule that you can follow to cover anatomy and physiology. Now being a biomedical engineer, as we discussed in the last video, it is very important for you to understand how the human body works. And to do the same, you need to have a good understanding about anatomy and physiology. So in this, we will be first of all, we'll be seeing what are the important topics that you have to cover under anatomy and physiology. First, we will be starting off with introduction to anatomy and physiology. Here you will be understanding the basic concepts and terminologies, level of organizations. What I mean by level of level of organizations is basically a group of cell makes a tissue, a group of tissues make organs and the group of organs make organ systems. So level of organization, anatomical positions and body systems is what you will be seeing. Cells and tissues, basically you will be understanding the structure and function of cell, cell division, major types of tissues, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue, uh, different aspects to that. Once that is done, we will be seeing skeletal systems, uh, understanding how the bones and different bone structures are, what are joints and how, what is the importance of skeletal, skeletal system in the human body, how it helps in movement and protection, a lot of things about skeletal system. Once that is done, you will be getting into muscular system wherein you will be understanding different types of muscles, right? Skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, how are the different structures of each of these muscles and how the muscles help in, you know, again, muscle contraction movements and uh, support, providing support to the body structure and all these things. Post that, we will be getting into nervous system wherein you will be seeing the structure and function of brain, spinal cord, peripheral nerves. And so basically, if you know when you are developing a prosthetic, the importance of nervous system becomes very important. So we will be trying to see some practical implementations of all these things as well. That is done. We'll move to cardiovascular systems, wherein you will be, as, as you know, right, it's all about heart. So you will be understanding the structure and function of heart. So basically, now let's say if you are a biomedical engineer, you have to understand the importance of pacemaker, how it is placed inside the body and all these things. Maybe you need to have a good understanding about uh, the functioning of heart and the structure of heart how the blood is circulated how the you know transportation of uh, different gases is happening in the chambers of heart different things you will be understanding then you will be moving to respiratory system now respiratory system as you know we will be going in depth about lungs how different exchange of gases happen in the lungs again in the heart there is that is not basically the exchange of gases it is basically the transportation of gas to the lungs to maybe have from maybe making it, make it oxygenated and deoxygenated it goes that way and here you will be understanding the role of respiratory system in oxygenation and carbon dioxide removal it's a very interesting topic to study once that is done, my favorite, you will be seeing digestive system wherein you will be understanding how the food particles are absorbed and excreted from the body and uh, you will be understanding what are the types of acids that are available in the stomach, then small intestine, large intestine, so very interesting thing to study. Then we will get into urinary system wherein you will be understanding the functions of kidney. Again, kidney, when you study about the anatomical structure of kidney, it's very interesting. I don't know if you know, I remember a few topics, Henley's loop, loop of Henley and ascending loop, descending loop. So it's pretty interesting topic that you can study, that we will be studying. Once that is done, endocrine system. Again, we will be studying about glands and hormones, how the hormones are synthesized and regulated and endocrine disorders and different aspects to that. 
after that is done we'll go to reproductive system we will understand about male and rep uh, female reproductive organs gametogenesis reproductive cycles pregnancy now recently there is a lot of improvisations or innovations that is happening specifically to you know the gynecology sector wherein you are doing a lot of research to you know develop new equipments or uh, new implants that you can use while a female is going through uh, the pregnancy phase and we will get to see all those technologies as well in the coming videos and once that is done lastly we will be seeing the integumentary systems which is basically the structure and function of skin and now again if you don't know the importance of skin and as a biomedical engineer let's say when you are using a pulse oximeter when you are using different type of electrodes in the uh, in the body skin plays a very important role right it, it it shows the different type of resistance and because of which the parameters can change so we will be seeing that and the structure of hair nails thermoregulate uh, thermoregulation protection and different sensory functions so this is basically the 12 important topics that you should study as a biomedical engineer specifically when you're talking about anatomy and physiology but the question here that remains is why studying the above topics are important as a biomedical engineer we discussed some of these points in the last video as well so the first is medical device design right whenever uh, you are developing a medical device now as a biomedical engineer you often work on the design and development of medical devices right you develop different kind of prosthetics implants medical equipments diagnostic equipments a lot of things so understanding anatomy and physiology is very crucial when you are designing these devices second point biomechanics now biomedical engineers involved in biomechanics study the movement and mechanism of the body so basically now let's say if you are developing a, a prosthetic right let's let's take example of prosthetic only now when you are developing this prosthetic it's completely related to the movement now let's say if you are developing a limb you have to completely understand how the movement will be working now until and unless you understand the biomechanics the biology part or the uh, physiology part and understand how different body structures are working or functioning you cannot develop a really good prosthetic or orthopedic device tissue engineering and regenerative medicine now regenerative medicine is uh, something that is slightly on the different side but tissue engineering is something that you as a biomedical engineer can contribute a lot so in the field of tissue engineering you basically uh, aim to create functional tissues or organs for transplantation and regenerative purposes so recently there are a lot of artificial organs that are coming up in the healthcare industry that you know different researchers and scientists are developing so tissue engineering is something that is a really fascinating domain to pursue and in the future the opportunities is going to boom a lot in this sector but i specifically am not that interested to work with this domain so maybe if you are interested you can look into it and even for this understanding how different tissues are working and all these things becomes very important next is medical imaging now when you talk about mri scans ct scans ultrasounds when you are doing all these things developing and improving medical imaging technologies to do these things a solid understanding of anatomy and physiology is necessary now as i said when you are taking uh, you know a ct scan there are different angles in which the image is image is taken from and maybe you can analyze and interpret the data accordingly so again to do this you need to have a solid understanding of anatomy and physiology now three more points i'll quickly cover it medical stimulation and virtual rea uh, reality now as the industry is moving towards ml ai virtual reality and augmented reality it is very important for you to have a good understanding now let's say one classic example of augmented reality can be let's say the practitioners or the medical students who are studying in colleges now let's say if they don't have a physical organ to work with right what they can basically do is let's say you can develop a technology using virtual reality wherein they wear the vr glasses or oculus and they are able to see a live heart in front of them they can dissect it and they can do whatever they want to study in depth about heart right but to do that again you need to have a complete understanding of heart how exactly it is working and functioning what are the different layers that are involved all these things when you know when you are implementing it in virtual reality it becomes very 
रियलिस्टिक में भी आई कैन से सो इट बिकम्स वेरी रियलिस्टिक इवन फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स एंड द प्रोफेशन टू प्रैक्टिस दर प्रोफेशन रियली वेल बायो मटेरियल्स एंड बायो कंपैटिबिलिटी नाउ बेसिकली एज आई सेड इन दैट लास्ट पॉइंट दैट आई मैंशन लर्निंग अबाउट स्किन हेयर नेल्स हाउ एग्जैक्टली इट वुड हेल्प इज नाउ लेट्स से यू आर डेवलपिंग एन इम्प्लांट वैन यू आर डेवलपिंग एन इम्प्लांट इट बिकम्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू नो वेदर द मटीरियल दैट यू आर यूजिंग इज गोइंग टू बी फाइन इट इज़ नॉट गोइंग टू रिएक्ट विद द स्किन इट इज़ नॉट गोइंग टू कॉज एनी इन्फ्लेमेशन और एनी साइड इफेक्ट सो टू अंडरस्टैंड दीज थिंग्स यू नीड टू हैव अ गुड अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट बायो मटीरियल्स वॉट आर द डिफरेंट मटीरियल्स दैट यू कैन यूज एंड वेदर दैट मटीरियल कैन गिव अ साइड इफेक्ट when you when 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 a when a patient is using it so a lot of research can be done in this segment as well but again you need to have understanding about tissues you need to have understanding about the entire uh, structure of the skin how exactly skin is acting as a resistance what are the different parameters which you have to take care these things you will be studying in detail in biomaterials and compatibility again that is why anatomy and physiology becomes important for you to know last is clinical collaborations in simple words i will tell what exactly it means now let's say as biomedical engineers you mostly work with doctors researchers or maybe scientists but when you are let's say working with doctors if you know their terminologies the kind of conversation that you have becomes very meaningful now let's say if you are a biomedical engineer you don't know what is a ventric what is a ventricle and the doctor is discussing in detail about ventricles with you and you are clueless so that is something that will affect you as a person and also your profession because it basically shows that you are having lack of information and knowledge when you are in the specific healthcare domain so again for clinical collaborations it is very important for you to understand uh, the medical terminologies so there are diff- see there are seven i just mentioned seven points but there are more points to it but again from person to person it depend uh, it varies right now let's say if i am interested more towards medical device then maybe i will not be focusing that much on the mechanics and movements of the body right or maybe i will not be focusing that much on tissue engineering so depending on the person's interest and the kind of specialization that he wants the importance varies okay so i believe whatever we discussed so far made a lot of sense to you now let's say now mostly i get this query right ki as a first year student i don't know how to study these things what i should study what i should not study or what is a structured way to study these things or what are the important topics that i should study as a fresher so keeping it very easy i have given you a complete structurization to study these topics now when you start with introduction to anatomy and physiology you will be focusing on learning anatomical terminologies level of organization positions and planes and body systems overview now once that is done now this is only the things that you have to focus now when i am telling that you have to study introduction to anatomy and physiology it doesn't mean in level of organization also you are going in depth about cell you are going in depth about tissues and organs no because in the coming sections we will be studying in detail so you have to make sure you study in a smart way rather than doing a lot of hard work right because anyways we will be getting into cells and tissues in the coming lectures so you just have an overview and get just get an understanding about these things second thing you will be jumping to cells and tissues now when you are studying about cells and tissues basically what you will be doing you will be studying in depth about cells cell division different types of tissues and their characteristics functions of different tissues and pretty much stuffs like that then you will be jumping to skeletal system in skeletal system again you will be covering the structure of bone the composition of the bone and different types of bone different type of joints and their classifications bone development and growth now this becomes very important when you are someone who is very interested to work towards orthopedic now specifically if i tell you about a company there's a company called striker so in striker there is a designation called maco product specialist so if you are aiming for that position orthopedics become very important and if you want to get into a similar role to that then maybe skeletal system is something that you should be focusing a lot on now once that is finished muscular muscular systems i'm sorry muscular systems you will be understanding different types of muscle functions of different type of muscle and how muscular system is involved in movement and posture then nervous system again going in detail and i will not be covering all of this because the video will be really long so in instead of that what i will be doing is i will be giving you this entire chart in the description in a google sheet you can go there download it and then maybe go through in detail about the different 
topics and subtopics that you will be studying now the question here that remains is how to study now okay i know how to study this like i know what to study but how to study it now if i start with introduction to anatomy and physiology how long will it take if i don't have a structure or a routine maybe it will take me months to just finish that one module so i am giving you a weekly study plan in which you will be understanding what you have to study every week so overall we will be taking 9 weeks which is approximately 2 months of time to completely finish anatomy and physiology okay so when you open this chart like in week 1 what you have to study anatomy and physiology introduction so here we will be as i said you can see what you have to study basically in this week what textbook to uh, re refer to what online resources to refer to everything i will be giving in this description of each of the modules weekly modules that i have mentioned so you can go through it as well and uh, again now you have a weekly plan but how much time should i devote on a daily basis to finish these topics so we will be seeing that also i have also given you a detailed daily plan also so that it becomes very easier for you to uh, be systematic in your preparations you are not lazing around and uh, yeah you can keep the progress and you can track your progress basically why i am telling this is basically because when let's say you have a goal and if you can't track the progress and if it is not having any deadlines and you are not able to understand how you are progressing further then that is not exactly a goal a goal should be something that is trackable you can track your progress which needs an action and which is also time bound so to do that i have given you the weekly plan as well so i'm sorry there are 12 weeks that you will be taking so 3 months of time you will be taking to finish anatomy and physiology and on a daily basis i will try to put regular videos on each of these topics starting from tomorrow now the best part here that i want to mention is how to practically implement these things now let's say if you are doing coding or if you are doing anything related to coding you do a lot of projects to implement but has it ever happened to you that you are studying anatomy and physiology with practical implementation or hands on experience i believe the answer would be no but here i am giving you a lot of websites wherein you can go and maybe you can explore different practical implementations of the things that you are studying now let's say there is a university of delaware's virtual microscope now maybe you can go go to this website and there will be a virtual microscope through which you can see different type of cells how exactly it looks in real life and all these things so that will help you to have a really good understanding about these topics coming back to the daily plan so weekly plan i believe it's clear there are 12 weeks that you will be focusing and in a week you will be studying for 5 days two days two days you will be taking an off just to chill around so that you are not feeling very monotonous coming to the daily schedule or the daily study plan it basically comprises of the things that you have to study on a daily basis now let's say introduction to anatomy and physiology day 1 which is monday what you will be studying tuesday what you will be studying wednesday what you will be studying thursday friday so week 1 finishes you will be done with anatomy and physiology's introduction for coming to week 2 again starting from monday to friday every day what you have to study week 3 week 4 and it goes on till week 12 so that you can completely track and understand things in a way, in a really good way also when i start the lectures from the coming videos i will be providing you with the notes uh, the lecture notes i will be providing you with the ppts that i would be uh, making to explain things to you in a more practical way which is also going to be fun filled so maybe you can use all these things to first get a hang of anatomy and physiology now there are a lot of you who may think that only anatomy and physiology if i study what about the other biomedical topics that i'm studying in the college so basically if you are a fresher you will be studying the basic subjects which is going to be same for all the departments even if you are in electrical computer science biomedical biotechnology all of you are going to study the common subjects like maths or biology and or electricals so it's going to be very common so in that time if you are developing a good understanding about anatomy and physiology when you start your core subjects you can interrelate and you can understand what things you are studying and how exactly these things will be implemented in the practical scenario right so that is why we are starting off with 
anatomy and physiology once this module is finished we will be jumping into the core biomedical topics in the meanwhile we will be also seeing about different medical equipments the use cases the calibrations why exactly it is used so a lot of exciting stuff to come up in the coming videos so i hope this would help you to get a first get yourself structured in what ways to study how to study and uh, basically when you are studying these things you will understand what are some important topics that really fascinates you and let's say if you are someone who is really interest, interested in cells and tissues you can think of taking a specialization in tissue engineering but the problem mostly that i have seen happening in colleges is till second year third year fourth year people are clueless as to what specialization they take or they want to take let's say if you want to pursue your masters so in this way if you are getting an understanding as to what is something that is fascinating you maybe you can plan your masters on that specific specialization again helpful so starting off from the scratch from the next videos we will be starting with the lectures i hope this video helped you all if yes maybe please share the video with your classmates or friends or people who are confused about whether to pursue biomedical engineering or not it will help them a lot see you in the next video we will be starting with the lectures till then stay safe and study well